Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, in the previous lecture, we have uh, seen what internal diffusion restriction is. And in this lecture, we will analyze how the substrate pro uh, profile develops within the porous support. As I have mentioned uh, in the previous lecture, that the substrate profile depends upon the geometry of the particle. So now we will be assuming two commonly used geometries for immobilized enzymes. One is a spherical geometry, which fits into many cases. And uh, the other we will be using will be membrane geometry or flat geometry, because it is the second most common uh, type of immobilization we use uh, in which I mean the second common type of geometry we use uh, in the immobilized enzymes. So uh, for spherical geometry we will study um, the development of substrate profile for one of the cases one of the three cases um, and uh, the case which we will choose will be the first case in the previous lecture which was when uh, the particle was neutral towards the substrate and the partition coefficient for the substrate was unity was one so uh, the effect of partitioning was not uh, was negligible which is mostly the case when we uh, have an aqueous medium and an aqueous um, enzymatic reaction. So um, we'll use the case in which partition coefficient is one and the substrate is neutral. The second thing we will assume is that the distribution of enzyme throughout the particle is considered to be uniform. And the other properties of material and, and environment throughout the particle are isentropic that is uniform okay so with these assumptions we will perform a mass balance for a particular place within the sphere for a spherical particle so we will begin with uh, spherical particles Okay, so this technique is called as shell mass balance technique and suppose this is our particle of radius r, suppose the radius is r, so we will assume a shell across the center in which we will assume at a place r and of thickness and of thickness so delta r and of thickness delta r so we will assume that the substrate is getting diffused into the solid support and similarly it diffuses into this shell so there will be substrate entering the shell at one end so if we have a closer look at the system so we will see that substrate will be entering and substrate will be leaving the system and with this radial distance there will be some change in the substrate concentration okay. so starting with the input part the rate of input the rate of 
इनपुट ऑफ सबस्ट्रेट द रेट ऑफ इनपुट ऑफ सबस्ट्रेट एट पोजिशन आर प्लस डेल्टा आर नाउ दिस पोजिशन विल बी आर प्लस डेल्टा आर द आउटर एंड द आउटर एंड ऑफ दिस शेल विल हैव रेडियस ऑफ आर प्लस डेल्टा आर द थिकनेस ऑफ डेल्टा आर द थिकनेस ऑफ द शेल सो द रेट ऑफ इनपुट विल बी गिवेन बाई फिक्स लॉ बाई फिक्स लॉ ऑफ डिफ्यूजन because we are assuming molecular diffusion inside the solid support fix law by fix law it will be equal to the coefficient of diffusivity for the substrate rate of change of substrate concentration With respect to the radial distance into now since this is the concentration, so to get the total amount, the mass of substrate within this area, entering this area, we'll have four pi r square the surface area of the shell. Mass entering across the surface area of the shell, and this will be for position of R plus delta R. Similarly, rate of output of substrate at position. The output position is. R will be again it will be given by fixed law and at this point now since this is a shell balance and we have uh, we have assumed that the shell is very very thin so the surface area across which the mass is getting diffused is same in both the cases at position r this script denotes the position of this mass rate and we assume that there is no generation of substrate only consumption so the rate of consumption is since this is an enzymatic reaction the rate of consumption of substrate will be governed by the kinetics the enzyme kinetics and since we have assumed that the enzymes are equally distributed throughout the matrix so of substrate if vs is the volumetric rate of reaction is the volumetric rate of reaction then rate of conduction of substrate will be rate of substrate concentration uh, sorry rate of uh, reaction the enzymatic reaction into delta r now this term this term is the volume of the shell so if this is a reaction per unit volume then multiplying this rate of reaction with the volume of the shell will give, will provide us the complete rate of reaction or complete rate of consumption of substrate within the 
כן. And when the conditions are steady state, therefore at steady state, at steady state there will be no accumulation. Okay, that is accumulation equals to zero. We we will get. or we will uh, obtain or get the following equation and our equation would be the input of substrate at position r plus delta r minus the rate of output of substrate at location r minus the rate of consumption of substrate within the shell and since there will be there is no accumulation this equation will be equal to zero now if you divide this equation if you divide this equation by 4 pi delta r 4 pi and delta r 4 pi is common in all the three terms so it will get cancelled out and delta r will be removed from this term but it would come as a denominator within this term our aim is to form the differential equation for this substrate profile so now dividing considering this to be our equation first equation dividing equation 1 by 4 pi delta r we get we get i'll rub this portion what we will get we will get equation similar to this one this is at r plus delta r minus at position r pull upon delta r minus ds r square equals to g this is our equation 2 Now, since all the terms here are similar, so this term signifies that uh, the numerator is the difference of this term at the output point. Sorry, at the input point, and the same term at the output point. Okay. 
so we can write this equation as in the form of delta that is it is the difference of ds ds upon dr r square upon delta r okay minus ds r square equals to 0 now see this is our equation 3 now we are transforming this equation and bringing it closer to the form of the differential equations and uh, a concept of differential equation says that the differential equation is a differential equation starts with the difference of two points on a curve and if that uh, those two points are very close to each other such that the uh, the um, such that the points are so close that one of the points especially the Uh, the points on the x axis are so close to each other that it eventually there is no difference between the two points and it tends to be the difference tends to be zero so in this case also this equation this equation is valid for shells of thickness delta r which have considerable thickness now in order to study the profile at any point in the sphere we will assume that the shell thickness is negligible and this would help us in converting this form into a differential form so uh, to study the profile to study the substrate profile let us assume delta r is very thin extremely thin and tends to approach to zero then by the concept of differentiation now the above equation 3 becomes limit now we'll apply the limits delta r tends to zero so now since this differential is too small it can be written as the written notation could be changed So this one and ds is a constant term, so ds can come out of the differential. Now we'll have ds upon dr into r square minus ds r square equals to zero. now here we can apply the product rule of differentiation now this is our first term and this is our this is our first function and this is our second function so uh, the product rule of differentiation says that uh, differentiation of first term keeping the second term constant plus differentiation of the second term keeping the first term treating the first term as a constant so this equation becomes now suppose this was our equation 
now on applying product rule on applying product rule of derivatives we get ds is a constant okay keeping r square as a constant r square will come out and this term would be can become a square derivative a second order derivative this is called as a second order derivative of the substrate concentration with the radius and similarly now the first term will be treated as a constant and we will perform the derivative of the second function now we know that derivative of r square will be 2r so now this equation is reduced to this form we will write these terms first and ds upon dr minus ds r square now suppose this is our equation phi now if you divide this equation phi by r square we get now this is uh, we are approaching closer to our final differential equation and uh, similar to the case in edr uh, we will we have to reach to a dimensionless form of this equation and from that dimensionless form um, we get an idea of a dimensionless uh, number a significant dimensionless number constant that we uh, that help us a lot in analyzing the internal diffusion restrictions so now we will divide this equation 5 by r square by r square so if we divide this by r square we will get now r square will cancel out from this term and we will finally get the Square dr square s plus now we have a single r here, so if we divide it by r square, we get now uh, suppose we have opened up this bracket, so d will move in here and get multiplied by this term because we need each and an individual term. to convert it into dimensionless form okay two ds r upon r ds upon dr minus ds r square will be removed from this term and this would be equal to 0 this will be our equation 6 
now uh, this is our final micellus uh, uh, this is our final derivative term and the rate of reaction here is governed by the intrinsic micellus maintain kinetics and says this kinetics is not linear if this would have been the first order reaction uh, then then uh, some solution for this differential equation might be possible but since this is a non linear function therefore simple analytical integration of this equation is not possible so similar to uh, the case in uh, external diffusion restrictions uh, this equation 6 can be converted into dimensionless form where we know so uh, since vs we can write it down as since vs since vs what is vs intrinsic michaelis menten kinetics is not linear is non linear non linear function therefore analytical simple therefore simple analytical solution of equation 6 is not possible is impossible okay therefore we will now convert it into dimensionless form to obtain some meaningful results to obtain to obtain important results we convert equation 6 into dimensionless form using functions like using relationships like we used in edr where beta was our dimensionless substrate concentration and here another term we will introduce that will be rho and this will be dimensionless radius of the support so now to convert this term into dimensionless form substrate in the first term in this first term we will multiply and divide by km so we'll have one km in the denominator which will move into with this substrate and make it beta and one substrate in the numerator will be left out so we will individually convert each term into dimensionless form and we will get respective constants outside as constants okay since substrate was the in in uh, double differentiation the function of substrate is raised to the power 1 only okay although this power does not implies uh, the actual meaning of the power it's double time differentiation but still 
the treatment is similar to that of par so this substrate is uh, not a square uh, substrate concentration it is raised to the power 1 only and but this r square is a part of this double differentiation so this occurs twice okay substrate concentration occurs only once but its differentiation is performed twice so the term differentiation is twice here so to convert this into dimensionless form we have to divide this r square by so we will divide and multiply this whole term by the capital r square the complete radius of the spherical particle so the numerator r square will move in with the small r square and will make it rho square and we will get a constant r square outside as denominator in this term and this term will get converted into d rho square similarly in the next term we have a single value of the term is 2 ds we can write the constants because constants will be constants and they won't be disturbed now here we have a small r term to convert this we will to convert this into rho we have to multiply and divide by r in this term and uh, if you multiply and divide this term by r the numerator r will go the numerator r will go with this small r and will make it rho and the the denominator r will remain as such similarly for this case the numerator r will move into with this term and will form d rho and the denominator r will get combined with the r already present here and will form r square similarly uh, the substrate concentration we will multiply and divide this term by km and then uh, denominator km will move in with this substrate concentration and will form beta and the denominator k uh, and the numerator km will remain along with other constants okay now michaelis menten kinetics is given by we know it is given by what we can write down here and we can convert it into dimensionless form also vs will be given by v max s upon km plus s now to convert it into dimensionless form the uh, dimensionless form km could be taken constant from denominator and this term would become s upon km since km will become common from the denominator so s upon km can be written as beta and the denominator will become 1 upon s upon km that be written as beta so this thing in the dimensionless form instead of vs we can write the dimensionless form of this term as v max beta upon 1 plus beta now this term is equal to 0 so our equation 6 becomes we get equation 6 becomes this equation and this equation we assume it to be our equation number 7 now if we divide equation 7 by a constant term ds km upon r square dividing equation 7 
by ds km upon r square we get the first term will be removed and we will get sim simply d square beta upon d rho square just to simplify equation 7 we have done this but we will get some significant well uh, results ds km this will be sorry ds ds km upon r square will remove from this side also and it will become d beta upon d rho minus now what we get here is really very important now ds came upon r square is accumulated here in this term d max r square upon ds came and beta upon 1 plus beta this will be equal to 0 and say this is our equation 8 now uh, like in case of EDR uh, we also have a constant uh, a special constant here like the damp color number in EDR the name of special constant here is Thiele modulus and for spherical geometry this Thiele modulus uh, has been defined in several ways and the most used and the most um, well defined and most simple way of uh, defining Thiele modulus for spherical particle is uh, given by Now, um, we will just write a small statement here. A dimensionless modulus, a dimensionless modulus similar to dam polar number in case of in case of external diffusion restrictions is also defined here here for IDR and it is called as and it is called as the theory modulus theory modulus in fact this theory modulus is defined for all sorts of heterogeneous catalysis so, but in uh, for the case of our enzymes, uh, the theory uh, for it, it is especially defined for the case of enzymes and spherically uh, spherical geometry, and uh, it is again a long process to obtain a Thiele modulus for a particular case, and we will not be discussing how it is obtained, but we will just note what it is. Thiele modulus. So, so for enzymatic particles, enzymatic particles, I'm writing enzymatic because this means that we have assumed Michaelis-Menten kinetics for our catalyst. So for enzymatic uh, particles, 
for enzymatic spherical particles for enzymatic spherical particles the shape of the catalyst is spherical the geometry is spherical for spherical particles Thiele modulus is given by Thiele modulus is given by phi it is represented by phi sp equals to r by 3 under root v max upon k m d s now this definition brings it closer to this term of equation 8 and if we just you know square both sides on squaring both sides what we will get pi sp square upon r square upon 9 the square root will be removed upon km ds now if we observe our equation 8 this term v max r square v max r square upon ds into km upon ds into km v max r square ds into km can be written as if we just rewrite this equation, this theory modulus equation as we can write it down as 9 phi sp square is equal to now we will write it in the form similar to this one v max r square upon ds upon km Okay, so equation so equation eight can be written as as d square upon d rho square plus 2 upon rho d beta upon d rho minus 9 pi sp theta modulus pi square beta upon 1 plus beta now this is our dimensionless form of this equation and suppose this is our equation 9 now both these equations equation 6 which we obtained earlier and this equation equation 9 can be solved numerically only using computational softwares and by using the following boundary conditions so now these equations equation 6 equation 6 and equation 9 can be solved numerically can be solved numerically to obtain of course to obtain the value of uh, different constants and finally the effectiveness factor uh, so equation can be solved numerically by using 
by using the following boundary conditions the following boundary conditions and what are these boundary conditions the first boundary condition is that the first boundary condition is that we will start from end of the particle where the substrate concentration will be equal to the bulk substrate concentration or in case of dimensionless form rho will be equal to 1 okay and the value of beta will be equal to beta bulk and the other end of the boundary condition is that the other boundary condition is that at the center of the particle the other end is the center of the particle r equals to 0 the rate of change in substrate concentration at this point will be we will assume it to be 0 in ideal cases or we can say uh, that uh, this would this condition would allow all the enzymes to be active almost all the enzyme except very 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 few enzymes which are located just at the center and which might not be the case uh, although we have assumed equal distribution of enzymes but might be there uh, after equal distributing the enzymes at just at the center there might be no enzymes probably but if there is loss there will be loss of just one enzyme one or near about one okay so in the dimensionless form this would be rho will be equal to 0 and d beta upon d rho will be equal to 0 these will be our boundary conditions using these boundary conditions and computation software so uh, we will put these boundary conditions into computation software and we can solve both these equations to get respective values of the constant terms okay so now uh, let's see what happens to the effectiveness factor how we will obtain effectiveness factor for cases in which internal diffusion restrictions come into play now we know that if effectiveness factor is a ratio it is a ratio of it is the ratio of observed upon theoretical values observed rate of reaction upon theoretical rate of reactions therefore in case of idr due to different substrate concentrations throughout the solid phase the the there is a continuous substrate profile hence at each and every point within the profile of substrate we will get different effectiveness factor and hence there will be a profile of effectiveness factor also hence we define two types of effectiveness factor okay now one effectiveness factor is the local effectiveness factor and this is variable local effectiveness factor okay. now the local effectiveness factor at any point is given by v max s upon km plus s and this is what this is the observed rate of reaction that we will observe the substrate at that point okay the substrate at that point again this will be calculated by us that whatever substrate concentration comes out to be at this point at uh, at at the point where we are uh, finding this local effectiveness factor 
So depending on the substrate concentration at that point, this will be the observed rate of reaction at that point, which we will again calculate. Okay. And then this will be the ratio of what should have been actually if all the substrate reach this point, then this should have been the rate of reaction or the theoretical rate of reaction, the maximum possible rate of reaction. If we convert it into dimensionless form as we have converted in the case of EDR, so this effectiveness factor will term will get reduced to the same form as in the case of external diffusion restrictions. The second effectiveness factor value is the second effectiveness factor value is the global effectiveness factor. It is called as the global or overall effectiveness factor. As I have uh, said earlier, in case of EDR, when teaching EDR, I said that effectiveness factors represent the extent of this diffusional restriction. So that is why it is very important. At the end, we must see what the effectiveness factor is and how much loss we have uh, in the enzymatic activity. So the global effectiveness factor is the mean integral value of it is it is the mean integral value of local effectiveness factor over the whole volume of the particle over the whole volume of the particle. Therefore, for spherical geometry, for spherical geometry, the global effectiveness factor, if we are using the dimensionless forms, would be for spherical part particle. No. So this is the volume of the particle. Okay, we have this as represented as the volume of the particle in the dimensionless terms. Now, if you solve this, we will get. meet as p rho square d rho and if we solve this term we'll have we have a square function so this will get the square will get changed into q and uh, the power goes to the denominator and gets added by one so it will also become three so this is two plus one three upon two plus one three and the limits provided here are from since it was dimensionless form so the limits are from 0 to 1 for the whole particle. So on solving this, we get 0 to 1 spherical particles rho squared d rho upon, 
upon 1 by upper limit is 1 upper limit of row is 1 so 1 cube will be 1 minus the lower limit will is 0 so the whole term becomes 0 and this 1 upon 3 minus 0 will be 1 point 1 upon 3 and this 3 will move towards the, the denominator of the denominator goes to the numerator by you know multiplying the reciprocal of multiplication so this will go into the numerator and the global effectiveness factor for spherical geometry would finally we can be found by thrice the integral of by using this equation thrice the integral of local effectiveness factor rho square d rho Now it's better to use computation softwares to solve these equations because these are very complex equations. So the global effectiveness factor beta s p dash for spherical particle is a strong function of the theorem modulus. Is a strong function of the theorem modulus which is also a function of now this theorem modulus which is also a function of which is also a function of the dimensionless substrate con concentration in the bulk so we can write it down in mathematical form as the global effectiveness factor is a function of the bulk concentration, dimensionless concentration and the theorem modulus of the spherical particle. Now to summarize, now to summarize the bulk effectiveness factor the global uh, effectiveness factor for spherical particles changes with changes with the bulk substrate concentration the global effectiveness factor changes with the bulk dimensionless substrate concentration or the bulk substrate concentration for a for a given value of For a given value of theorem modulus, for a given value of theorem modulus. Okay. So even when theorem modulus is constant for a process, the bulk substrate concentration would change the effectiveness factor, the global effectiveness factor of the immobilized enzyme particle and as i've said this effectiveness factor would defect uh, would depict the influence of uh, internal diffusion restrictions on the process and the Thaler modulus includes uh, the design parameters the kinetic parameters and the diffusion parameters as did the dam color number in case of edr so thank you and uh, i suppose uh, i'll discuss the next type of geometry in my next lecture that is the flat geometry or the membrane geometry in my next lecture thank you for listening to this long lecture thank you and have a nice day